What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, MCJ, and I'm back with another video on power effects and custom pages. And today what we're gonna look at is two methods for patching or updating a model-driven record or the parent record from a custom page inside of a model-driven app. So this is something that is really useful. It's something that people will use a lot. So you can launch custom pages and then you can pass some parameters to those custom pages, which means that you can then use that to update the current page that you've launched that custom page from. So if you're popping up a dialogue to capture some required information or to do something, uh, and then maybe that triggers something else, you can also write that data back to the custom page, uh, back to the model driven form. So what I'm gonna show you today is two different methods. So we're gonna start off with the Strutjuro um, smart button method, and then we're also gonna look at using um, just custom JavaScript and going through all that. So let's take a look at it. So I'm in a model-driven app here, and you can see up here I have a button here that says open custom page. This is a smart button. So Scott Giro, who made the Ribbon Workbench, released a solution called Smart Buns a couple of years ago. They allowed you to do certain things like run reports and um, run webhooks and things like that, uh, which I've covered in previous videos. Um, you can find a link to that one there. And one of the things he did recently is he updated the smart buttons to allow you to launch custom pages. So I'm going to go through how to do that in a later video, but today I'm going to show you how launching the custom page gives you some extra details that you may not know about. So this is a very simple custom page. So I'm gonna click uh, to open it. And it's only really small, it's just here. Um, and there's only a couple of bits to it. So we've got a GUID, which I'm gonna show you how to get. Uh, we have the entity type, which is that. And we also have this text field, which I can put something in. And we have a button. Um, so what, what will happen here is when I type something into this box, it's going to update the job title field on this contact record. So I could say um, CEO in here. And when I press this button, it's gonna write it to that job title page. And notice that I don't have to do anything. I don't have to refresh the page or anything else. It just automatically goes in there and the user sees that reflected straight away. Now let's have a look at the custom page to see how we accomplish this. So there's two things we need to do. So this is the custom page, uh, and I'll zoom in a little bit over here. Um, this is the custom page here, uh, and there's a couple of uh, labels here with values. Um, and there's two essential things that we need to do. We need to get some data from the model-driven app, and we also need to patch that data as well. So the first thing to do is go to your app, um, your app component in the app tree, in the component tree view here, and you can notice that in the on start event, so when this app starts, we're capturing a couple of pieces of data. So we're capturing, uh, we're capturing a, a parameter called record ID and a parameter called entity name. And we're storing those in two variables. So we're storing them in um, a variable called var record ID and, um, and a var entity type. So both of these things are actually coming from Scott Giro's smart ones. So they're actually capturing this data and it's sending it to um, the, the, the custom page. And we can use this param function to capture that data and then store it in a variable where we can use it. So this, this one here, set, um, set var record ID, param record ID, is basically saying, okay, when you pass me the parameter record ID, which is in the JavaScript that, or TypeScript that, that the smart buttons are using and sending to the, to the custom page, store that in a variable and we can use that variable later on. And we do the same thing for entity type as well. So one of both of these um, text labels here, um, this one var record ID just shows the record ID. And this var entity type just shows the, the entity type. So when we launched that custom dialog here on this custom page, we can see that's the that's the GUI for the record, and we can see that in my URL up here, it's this bit here, that matches this bit here. And we can also see this is the contact record. So we get those two pieces of data from the smart button solution, and that's really, really handy. So if we go back to my custom page. 
Um, this is just a text input box. There's nothing special about that. All we're doing is capturing that data. And then for the button, what we're gonna do is write expand the function. So here we have a simple patch function. So we're gonna do patch to contacts because this is the contacts table. And then we're gonna look up the contacts table where the contact, which is the ID of the record, equals this var record ID. And we're gonna tell this var record ID um, that it's a druid. Because otherwise it's just gonna uh, treat it as text and it may not look up the value correctly. Um, so we have a do it, um, and we're just saying, right, okay, this var record ID is a do it in the system. Look up the contacts record, find a contact with that var record ID that we're getting from the parameter from the smart from the smart buttons. Once we've got that, we put a comma in, uh, and we open our braces, and then we patch the job title field on the form with what we put in that text box one. So whatever we type in that text box one, we're going to write into that job title field. We'll close the braces. We're gonna end the function here by closing the bracket, the parentheses, and, and putting a semicolon. And then we use the back navigation button, and that's just gonna take us, that's gonna exit us out of that custom page and back to that app, and back to that form. So that's all this does, it's really, really simple. It's just literally patched to the, the table. We look up the record that we want patched to. We know the ID because we're getting that from parameters from the smart buttons. And then we patch the job title field with what's over there in that, um, in that box. So that's all really good, really easy, nice and simple. Now let's go have a look at our accounts. We have a list of our accounts here and we'll choose Wayne Ent. When that page loads up, we can see we have account number here and what our custom page will do is actually it will write to that. So we'll delete that and we'll hit save. And once that's saved, we can see that's blank. We have this button here called dialogue. So we're going to choose dialogue. This custom page is a little bit bigger uh, and is a different custom page from the one we just looked at, but we can still see we still have that same um, same GUID there. We can still see that we've got it's the same um, record ID that we've got at the top in my browser. We've got a box here and we have two buttons to do different things. So um, this one's going to update the account number, so I could type in something like 112233. And if I hit the submit button, it's gonna write that back to our accounts page, but you'll notice that nothing appears in the account number. If I go up to the ellipsis up here and hit refresh, we can see that that is actually in there and written to. Now I do have an alternate method here, so just, again, we'll just delete this out of here. I'll hit save. We'll choose dialog. And then we'll choose um, 332211, so the opposite. And we do have an alt button here, which has a slightly different function on to take us back, so choose that. Um, it might give us this warning. I think I'm, what I may need to do is add a delay or something in there. I uh, haven't managed to figure out a way to get around this at the moment, but it's fine. Um, it just is basically warning me that I'm leaving the page. That's fine, click OK. But what that'll do is that will navigate us back to this record and we can see that that's saved in there. So this is going to work slightly differently from the structure row smart button method, um, but it's still similar sort of functionality. So we'll take a look at this custom page. So this is this custom page. And again, um, I've got an on start to store some parameters. So for this, I'm storing the um, var record ID. So again, same, um, same variable I'm, I'm saving. But this time, um, for the param um, record ID, what, one thing that I'm doing is I'm taking the middle, um, middle digits. So when I use this method with JavaScript, which, which I'll show you in a second, um, it's going to send back um, everything with braces on the outside um, or brackets on the outside. So one thing we actually need to do is we need to um, format that data a little bit. Um, so the method that uh, brings that data back to this canvas app, one of the things it does is it actually puts braces around it. Structure row smart buttons removes the braces as part of the functionality. So you don't need to worry about that. 
But if you are not using the smart button solution and you want to send this from your JavaScript, uh, you will need this. Um, so we can't look at Scott's code because that's all part of his managed solution. Uh, although I think it is open source, so you might be able to look at it if you want to. Um, but the way I call this button is actually from some trust in JavaScript. So let's take a look at that. So this is my JavaScript function. And the function is send dialog, which I think we've shown in, in the last video of how to um, launch a dialog. And one of the or two of the additional outputs that we have in here are two additional parameters in this var page input bit. So var page input is like basically we're storing a, var a variable called page input, and that's going to equal everything inside of these braces. So each part of this is going to do something specific. So when we launch the xram.navigate2 um, and specify the page input and the navigation options, this bit launches the trust and page, but these are the parameters for which the trust and page comes from, um, and we open it up. So for instance, we've got name here, which is the name of the trust and page, so that we know, so this function knows which trust and page to open. So entity name, we're specifying this as account in here, uh, because this is going to run our account page, uh, but then this record ID is the important bit. So the record ID is that parameter in our in our um, Canvas app, as is entity name is another parameter in our Canvas app or trust and page. But this function here, xrm.page.data.entity.getID, uh, open and close brackets, this is a function that's available for model-driven apps for Dynamics 365 and Dataverse that allows you to get the ID of the record that you're in. And when you use this, it's going to give it with braces around the outside. So this record ID is going to come back with braces around the outside, but this is a function that we can get out from, uh, from within our custom page. So record and entity name and record ID, we have to match these exactly in our trust and page. So we can see record ID. Oh, and this was one I was playing around with trying to get the, uh, the other one working, but um, you could see that that was right on the other page. Um, so record ID with the um, capitalized I there, that's the parameter that's coming from my JavaScript and I can capture that in my custom page and I can set that as a variable. And then this mid takes the second and 36 digit um, and and just and just gets rid of the outside stuff. So that mid that mid this mid function is needed if you're using just core JavaScript and if you're not going to do anything in that JavaScript to strip these out before you pass that to the to the Canvas app or to the trusting page. But after I've got that, it's about, it's essentially the same uh, the same thing. So um, this submit button here. This is going to patch to the accounts and we're doing the exact same uh, as before. We're going to look up the accounts record where the account, so the ID of the record, equals the GUID for um, this uh, record ID that we've passed in. So that's the parameter that we've stored in a variable. And then we're going to patch the account number with whatever's in this, in this box here. And then we're going to go back. So that's the same function from the last one. However, we did notice that this one doesn't automatically refresh the page. So I think something in Scott Jero's um, smart buttons actually refreshes that page when we go back to it. Um, so maybe Scott can answer why that is, but uh, essentially um, it's not going to refresh the page when you do it. Um, there may be alternate methods to refresh pages, but my current alternate method was to actually just navigate to that page. So instead of using the back functionality, which will just close down that trust and page and take us back to wherever we were, uh, the other option we have here is we can navigate to that um, record. So again, navigate is a function inside Canvas apps. Uh, we just look up that same account that we've got here um, and we just navigate to that record. And that's why we got a little pop up to say, hey, do you know you're gonna leave this record? Just press okay, it takes us to that page and we can see things displayed. Uh, and there you have it. That's two different methods for um, using custom pages and writing data back to the model driven record. It's not big, it's not scary. It's just knowing what you need to do. Um, the, the important thing is how you get that parameter, which is the record ID of that page. So if you're using custom JavaScript, 
you can um, use the, the parameter that we set here, the uh, record ID inside the page input variable, and then you can capture that inside your uh, custom page, do some um, validation and, and strip off the, the um, braces because we don't need those. Um, and then use that to patch your record. If you're using start, structure as smart buttons uh, method, you don't need that at all. He's already gonna do that validation and that stripping for you. So you can um, just use that, that do it as is. Uh, and then essentially the rest of it is absolutely the same. It's just a case of patching to that record. So there you have it. That is two methods for patching to the custom, um, from the custom page to the model driven page that you've launched it from. Uh, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, if you could like it and share it with your friends, that'd be much appreciated. If you've not already, click the subscribe button and stay up to date with all my latest videos. And I'll see you next time.